Hello and welcome to Vista Talks, interesting discussions with interesting people from all around the world. I'm your host for today, Simon Hodgkins, and I'm delighted to be joined by Ainsley Peters. Ainsley is a designer, an educator and a lecturer. Uh, she teaches in the area of industrial design, uh, design thinking, design history, and has worked as a mentor and consultant for businesses looking to implement design strategies and design thinking processes. Ainsley has a fascinating background in her journey to get to uh, what she's doing today. And uh, as a product designer, past collaborations include furniture, homewares, lifestyle brands, interior styling projects, and more recently, the design of uh, public spaces. So Ainsley's very passionate about uh, developing the links between student designers and industry. And currently in a design practice and research interest, they're primarily focused on design for health and well-being, the sustainability of materials and processes, and the role of design in creating inclusive communities. Ainsley, you're very welcome to the show today. Thank you for having me, Simon. It's great to be here. Well, it's my pleasure. So let's move on. I've got a lot of areas I want to dive into. And if, if it's okay with you, I want to start at the fact that you're a lecturer in design. And I know that's at the Atlantic uh, Technological University or ATU. And some of our audience may not be aware of ATU, uh, the fact that it has eight campuses, a uh, research centre. Uh, I know you've got over 600 programmes currently. So maybe you could share a little bit about your journey of how you you ended up at ATU and maybe talk a little bit about the role and the work that you do there. Excellent. Yes, ATU is um, a really exciting new development for the West and the Northwest of Ireland. It is the coming together of the former Institutes of Technology, the Galway Mayo IT, Sligo and Letterkenny. Um, and it is a, a we launched um, the 1st of April um, this year. So it's very exciting for what we can now offer to our students and within our communities of practice. And I am based at one of our Galway city campuses um, with the School of Design and Creative Arts. So I teach primarily our undergraduate design program, um, which currently has four specialty pathways that students can choose, game design and animation, industrial design, um, fashion and textile design and graphic design and illustration. And from September of this year, we'll be including interior design into those pathways as well. And I also coordinate our professional practice and projects program, which is um, a semester long program for all of our design students to connect with industry through a work placement or an industry project. That sounds like an awful lot. Uh, I wasn't I wasn't aware of how large the operation was over at uh, ATU. It sounds like a very impressive uh, organization and and growing from from all accounts. Absolutely. So could you just share with our audience? I know prior to that you were engaged very much in sort of global international camps, but predominantly around the, the, the care for sick children mm -hmm. uh, in nonprofit organizations. And I think Maybe just from an international perspective, could you could you share a little bit of your your journey? Um, because you and I know each other from back when Hollywood actor Paul Newman set up the very first European uh, place in a, a beautiful uh, place in Ireland, which was a, a you know a, a castle on five hundred acres, and you were very uh, instrumental in the success. Uh, to what happened there. But you've gone on to that, to Colorado and other things. Could you maybe unpack that a little for our audience? Yes. And then, we'll, then we'll dive back into some of the design because I just think it's, it's wonderful and fascinating. Yes, definitely. Yeah, my, my path to um, arrive where I am now um, is maybe not... Um, sort of the typical path or, or the path that some of my, the, my colleagues have taken. I definitely did not take a direct route here. Um, my academic background um, was in design theory and aesthetic philosophy. And after that, I, I worked um, with the Serious Fun Children's Network, which is a global network of camps um, that are providing recreation programs for children with serious illnesses and their families. So as you mentioned, um, Paul Newman set up the very first 
camp, the Holmwell camp in Connecticut, and he also set up the first European camp in Ireland. And now that network of camps has grown to over 25 camps globally. Um, so I, I worked for a number of years at Barrettstown in Ireland as the camp director and working with young people from across Europe and looking at how we can provide recreation programs that um, increase confidence and build trust and self-esteem in young people who are experiencing a lot of challenges in their, in their personal life and looking at how we can create a program that is inclusive to varying abilities, language, culture um, within that community of young people. And I left Barrettstown to spend one year in Colorado to help um, set up a new camp that was being started there um, up in the uh, Vale Valley outside of Vale, Colorado. And that was a, a really incredible experience to take the knowledge that I had from working at a mature established camp like Barrettstown and bring that to this, this new camp with a new population and um, new challenges. So um, I did that in 2010. And then I decided to take a bit of a break from that career. It's a, it's a pretty um, intense environment. And I was quite young at the time and, and sort of felt that I um, needed a bit of a break from doing that. And decided to um, study at the GMIT Letter Frack campus, which is now ATU's Connemara campus, um, to study furniture design, which um, I had never picked up a tool in my life. I didn't know if I would like it. I didn't know if it was for me. I just really wanted to explore something creative and to um, learn a new skill. And I was there for four years. I, I did an undergraduate degree there. While I was there, I was still consulting with a serious fund network um, with the global programs in Cambodia and Swaziland. Um, so I went and helped to support local teams there um, in capacity building and getting their programs running. And while I was studying in furniture design as part of my professional practice as a student, um, I was able to bring some of those different experiences together and I spent a semester in Zambia working with a carpentry training program and helping to establish a carpentry training program in Zambia and that was probably the first time I really realized how much crossover there was with these two passions that I had and really looking at how we can um, build capacity through through design and through craft um, as a way to, to support communities. And so that really kind of was a, an unexpected um, realization, I think, for me that, um, I guess I was taking a career break, but you can't really avoid um, the passions that we have and the experiences that we have. So uh, when I finished up in GMIT Letter Frack, I began working full time um, at ATU. There was a, a new design program that was starting around that time. So I was able to teach on that program from um, the first year that we brought students into that. And so that's where I am now. Yeah. Well, Ainsley, what a, what a journey. Wow. Um, <laughs> And listen, personally, I, I want to thank you because I, I've worked with you in the past and the, the dedication, the expertise, the care that you have put into and continue to support uh, children with serious illness, families who are dealing with children with serious illness uh, through to bereavement or respite. Uh, it, it's nothing short of phenomenal. And I know people who have worked with you and people who know you and your expertise and um you are truly world class when it comes to the uh, experience, expertise, and dedication that, that you've delivered. So I just wanted to personally say that. And that's very uh, kind of you to say. Thank you. No, I, I, absolutely. Um, so listen, thank you for sharing that uh, background because it is a, I suppose, an unusual path into the design <laughs> and the lecturing and etc. Yeah. So maybe let's move on a little bit and let's talk a little bit more about design. Let's talk about education. And let's talk about the importance of that crossover, because in business today, you know, whether it's the, the customer experience, the user experience, uh, design plays a, a huge part. But of course, you, you need to understand what you're talking about. You need to have domain knowledge. Now, I know from your academic perspective, and I want to get this next bit right, because um, I, I think you're currently studying for a Master of Arts at the Bookhamshire 
new university. Am I right in saying that? That is correct. Yes. Yeah. Uh, now, on top of that, you've got a Bachelor of Science, uh, obviously in furniture design and, and manufacture. Um, and I think that was the Galway Mayo Institute of Technology you were right, yes. mentioning. Um, a Master of Arts uh, from the University of Sussex and a Bachelor of Arts, Philosophy and Art History from the Western University. That's correct. Wow. Uh, so <laughs> look, I've got to ask you, um, what's your personal approach to learning? You're obviously uh, highly engaged. You're lecturing now. You're, you're involved with ATU, of course. But when it comes to learning, what's your personal approach? Uh, and what, what advice would you have for others? Because that, that's a lot, Ainsley. It is. <laughs> Um, when I finished my my second undergraduate, I swore I would never go back to formal education and surprise, <laughs> here I am again. Um, I'm obviously, you know, uh, very much a lifelong learner. And um, I think for me, part of it is that I am extremely curious about what people are working on and and learning from experts in their field. There is such a rich body of research and innovation that's happening. And it just feels like such a shame to not take advantage of that. And I think one of the um, positive byproducts of the pandemic has been this increased access to experts and to knowledge and learning opportunities. Um, through you know online conferences and workshops and um, free and affordable and experiences and I think that um, you know we have this great opportunity to really tap into networks that previously were un in inaccessible for a lot of people and for me being able to learn from other folks hear what their passions are and how their paths um, are, are taking different routes has helped me to really refine what my practice is and to really see how I can bring this various experience and interest that I have into something that um, works well together. You know, if I'm studying, as you said, um, a master's of design for health and well being. And that's really this culmination of my past experience with the Serious Fun Network and looking at furniture design and really looking at how we can create spaces and products that are going to have positive impacts on people's health and well being. And, you know, being able to connect to that network of of academics and practitioners is really helping me to see how I can best use all that experience that I have. So I'd really encourage folks to, you know, look into what's available to them to be able to, um, to learn from others. And whether that's just for the sake of learning or whether it's in a way to enhance what you're currently focused on in your own work. Oh, I couldn't agree more. And, um, I, I want to sort of ask you a little bit about some of your thoughts on the importance of design and particularly design thinking in business. And the reason I'm, I'm asking that, Angel, is because business um, is a lot more aware today, or at least some businesses are a lot more aware today, of the importance of culture, the importance of diversity, the importance of inclusion. And design and design thinking is playing a part in business today. Have you any thoughts on, on that area? Yeah, oh, I have a lot of thoughts <laughs> on that area. Design thinking is, is definitely a term I think, as you say, people are a lot more familiar with. Um, and we're seeing it being used or talked about in a lot of different industries. Design thinking is not specifically for the creative sector or for someone with design in their job title. And ultimately, design is problem solving. And design thinking, the design process, the design mindset, at its core, it's about empathy. And when we bring an empathetic lens into our work in any industry, we're able to create solutions that are better for our customers, for our audience, for our team, for our communities. And with the iterative nature of design and empathy being that thread that runs through the entire process, um, when we bring this into our work, we become stronger listeners and stronger observers. And I think it's really important for anyone that is looking to bring this process or this mindset into their business to remember that it's not just about it being outward facing, but it's also about our internal 
processes and our internal systems, because when we are bringing that process, that empathetic lens into how we work in our teams, we're going to be stronger in working with what we provide for our customers and our stakeholders. I love the term empathetic lens and bringing that into business. Uh, mm -hmm. That No, that, that really does help uh, explain the importance of it. So thank you, Ainsley. Um, a lot of research at the Atlantic Technological University, ATU, mm -hmm. it's carried out, I know, in collaboration with companies and communities, mm -hmm. uh, and of course, other stakeholders, I'm sure. But it includes the participation in large scale international networks. Mm -hmm. uh, and you often bring those companies, um, communities, local authorities, and others from your region in, into that network. Mm -hmm. Is there any examples of how that actually works on the ground? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we are extremely proud of the links that we have with industry and, and speaking for the program that I work on, our design program, we have been running our professional practice program for four years and uh, three of those years have been in a pandemic. <laughs> and with this time of uncertainty in business and um, you know a, a season of unknowns, the support and mentorship for students has never wavered from our industry partners. And you know we're able to expose students to a range of businesses from you know small independent designers to large agencies working with international customers. And it allows our students to determine where they may fit into the industry. And it provides a better footing for them as graduates um, in the development of technical skills and interpersonal skills, starting to create their own networks um, in addition to the network that they're, they're gaining from their education. Um, so it's, it's a really instrumental part of, of what we do with our students. Um, one of the really exciting initiatives at the minute um, is called Crew, which is Creative Enterprise West. And that's a collaboration between um, formerly GMIT, so ATU, the Western Development Commission and the Galway Film Center. So CREW stands for Creative Enterprise West, and it um, is an organization to support enterprise specifically in the creative technology sector in digital design. And we are currently wrapping up our first postgraduate certificate in creative entrepreneurship and enterprise development, which is co-facilitated by AT lectures and mentors from within the crew network. So that's been a really um, exciting development and one that we're looking forward to building on in the next couple of years. Well, thank you for sharing that. That sounds like a really exciting initiative, the crew initiative, correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah fantastic, fantastic. Um, well, look, I, as we come in towards the end of our time together here, Ainsley, unfortunately, I did want to squeeze a couple of extra things mm -hmm. in. And I wanted to ask you about sustainability a little bit more. Because when it comes to design, when it comes to design, uh, sustainability of you know materials, processes, it's sort of really important. Um, it's always been important, but I think there's a huge focus on it now, and people are people and companies are aware of it. So, could you maybe tell us how sustainability is playing a role in design, and you know, does this impact your own projects? Absolutely. I we have a responsibility to consider the health and well-being of people and planet um, in, in all that we're doing. And again, that um, extends beyond design. And you know, we need to look at sustainable design not as this add-on or as a specialty, but more um, a, a thought process that underpins the entire process of what we're trying to achieve, whether that's in product design or services or experiences. And we can consider materials and um, if they're being responsibly sourced, the production manufacturing methods. And, and that conversation has been happening for a long time. And, and looking at the end of life of products, how do we reuse or repurpose um, products? But we also really need to look at sustainability in terms of accessibility for customers. So choosing a sustainable option can't be cost prohibitive. You know, we need to make sure that we are creating 
outputs for customers at, at all price points that are accessible to our entire communities. Um, and that's, I think, really where we need to be moving as an industry and, and we're getting there. We just, we, we have a bit of a way to go um, still. And, and my research at the moment is around health and well-being in interior spaces and specifically looking at workplace design. And, you know, the evidence and the research shows that when we choose natural materials, when we bring in elements of biophilia and biophilic design, it's not just better for the environment, but it's better for our employees and it's better for our, our bottom line as a business. Um, there is research to show increased productivity and job satisfaction and reduced absenteeism, reduced stress, reduced blood pressure, um, just by you know, being really mindful of how we are connecting people with the natural environment. So when we look at sustainability, you know, we need to be looking at it um, in a 360 sort of way and drawing our inspiration from nature and also really respecting how we are including um, nature and, and our stewardship into our designs. Well, it's fascinating when, you, when you're looking at that from a, a real interior point of view and how it impacts us as humans. Um, I was, I was um, listening to a, a discussion very, very recently, Ainsley, uh, just to take it out a little bit about the amount of space junk materials there's about thirty thousand pieces that are circling the earth in some kind of orbit and even with the best tools and companies trying to resolve this issue there's about a plus or minus 200 kilometer uh, difference between where we actually think that junk is and where it might be which makes docking with it at like thousands of miles an hour or thousands of kilometers an hour quite difficult and there's sort of like a bit of a conspiracy theory that says you know if you don't control this problem early on you could actually create this problem where it's actually difficult to leave earth because you've got all this junk around it okay. so back to design yeah. thinking the people that are putting up all these satellites and you know the the disposed rocket parts etc or the if there's a collision and there's there's nuts and bolts and everything thrown around how those products get taken out of that orbit which are random at the best of times how you bring or get that back in through the atmosphere so it burns up or how do you how do you remove that it, it's starting to become on people's radar so it gives me some hope that if at least there are companies looking at that from a you know a, a space perspective there's definitely a lens uh, to use a, a term from earlier and a real focus isn't it, on the importance of sustainability in business and in our everyday lives right so that health and well-being really does have an, a knock-on effect across everything um, so thank you very much indeed for, for sharing that uh, real tangible example so a couple of couple of other quick things i said i want to squeeze in a couple of things what advice would you give to the aspiring designer because your your sort of route was a little bit sort of uh uh untypical i suppose mm -hmm. or uh not necessarily the route that that aspiring designers might take but do you have any you know you're sort of there you're at the the, the top of the food chain you're very much engaged in this uh, design thinking what advice would you give to an aspiring student today yeah. ainsley I think, I think that's a great question um and a bit of a tough question. <laughs> oh. I, I really believe that design is for everyone. I think that um, when I was um, a young student, when I was um, you know, first going into third level education, I maybe felt like I didn't have the experience in, um, in my creativity or in some of those those skills that we maybe historically would associate with design. And I, I think that's changing and I'm glad that that's changing because design is for everyone. You can follow and trust in a process and you can come up with a really effective solution um, by following this, this process and engaging in empathy, engaging in collaboration. But I think what is really important for young designers to remember is that their unique perspective is, is what we need in the industry and what we need in the world. And I think that I would encourage young designers to really 
consciously seek inspiration and to gather that inspiration to look and listen to the world around them, um, to take note of what they find inspiring, because that's the resource that they'll be able to draw upon um, when they're stuck. And that's what's really going to differentiate their work. And that's what we need. We need to be able to pull together um, inspiration and, and create links where maybe others don't see those links. And that's what makes the, the field really special. And I think that's um, what I would encourage um, all designers and, and especially aspiring designers to really focus on. Thank you, Ainsley. So look, at the end, I'd like to ask you, is there anything else that you'd like to share with our audience? Maybe something we haven't touched on or, or any, any other topic you'd like to, to mention before we wrap up? Um, I think just, you know, going back to an earlier question around learning, I would just encourage folks to um, really explore any topics that they found interesting, you know, in this talk or in other talks and to, um, you know, take advantage of what's out there because there are a lot of great innovators um, working in, in a mix of spaces right now. Um, so I would just encourage people to join the conversation. Well, thank you, Ainsley. So look, that, that brings us to the end of our discussion today. I, I hope you've enjoyed uh, our discussion on design, design thinking, and the empathetic lens, that all important uh, element uh, that businesses and, and people around the world are starting to really focus on, which is a great thing to see. Um, please make sure to tune in again next time, where once again uh, on Vista Talks, we hope to be catching up with some interesting people on some interesting topics from Thank you, Angela. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Take care.